So uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for uh, joining us this afternoon for uh, what for me uh, and probably my colleague uh, Susanna is our first attempt at one of these webinars, uh, really trying to engage with you um, about uh, Mott McDonald and specifically our work in the defence sector and the careers and opportunities that are open within Mott McDonald Defence. Uh, I think it's um, important to sort of distinguish as we go through this uh, webinar that actually the key here is that we're wanting people to join Mott McDonald. Uh, and firstly, you'll be joining Mott McDonald. You know, secondly, you'll be working in our environmental uh, built environment part of the business. And then thirdly, you'll be working within defence. So really the purpose of the presentation today here and the webinar, which we're hoping to, will lead to some questions at the end, is really to give you an insight and, and to explain why you might want to work in the defence sector and also why might you want to work in the defence sector as part of Mott McDonald. Therefore, as we go through this webinar, there'll be a, a number of insights, particularly through the videos into the other areas where Mott McDonald are uh, working. And as we conclude, as we talk about the talent acquisition, hopefully it'll give you an idea of, of all the opportunities that are in, you know, available in MOTS uh, as well as defence. Why are we here? What inspires and motivates us in what we do every day? We've always been driven by a passion to make people's lives better. Right back to our founders 120 years ago, who pioneered access to clean, plentiful water supplies and developed public transport making it easier for people to live and work in cities. That spirit lives on in our purpose today. To improve society by considering social outcomes in everything we do, relentlessly focusing on excellence and digital innovation, transforming our clients' businesses, our communities, and employee opportunities. As a matter of principle, we believe nobody should be disadvantaged, and we know from experience that inclusive projects deliver the best results for everyone, our clients too. That's why social outcomes, accessibility, inclusion, empowerment, resilience, and well-being are at the heart of our purpose. At Mock McDonald, we use the breadth of our expertise to see the connections between the projects we're helping to deliver and the world around them how the infrastructure, services, the natural environment, businesses and people work together to maximise the benefit for all. This is where digital innovation comes to the fore. Combined with deep subject knowledge, our digital skill set helps us, our clients and partners to address old challenges better and solve new ones. To see problems and possibilities more clearly, to be more agile, efficient, and effective. It's all powered by relentless focus on excellence. Excellent people, systems, and technology all supporting innovation and creative solutions. All centered on improving society. That's why we're here. Sales as a business in Mont McDonald, we're about 16,000 strong and we work uh, globally. Uh, as part of our business, we work across a number of our sectors through from built environments, transportation, uh, through to international development and energy. And via that sort of quite diverse business and quite exciting business, we have a couple of sort of what we like to call, you know, unifying principles that uh, drive us in our work. And that's what we refer to as our purpose. And it's something that we're quite actually quite proud of. And, and I can genuinely see um, how it drives our work uh, in, in all our sectors, actually. So our purpose is to improve society by considering social outcomes in everything uh, we do. Uh, and what does that mean practically in the defence sector? Well, for the defence sector, that means that we're not just delivering projects. We've truly brought into how defence are trying to improve at the moment, both the live, work and train elements of their, their estate and their built environment. And we're working through our projects to try and do that. Now, a lot of that is achieved through focusing on what we like to refer to as our professional and technical excellence, and also through our digital innovation. We're also looking, as we say, to sort of transfer, transform our clients' businesses. So that means as well, as part of our work in defence, not only do we uh, work in delivering infrastructure projects, we also look to provide strategic advisory services, particularly through programme and project uh, management. 
But at the same time, I think what really makes us different and where we refer to as employee opportunities is that we're an employee owned business. So for the people of those that we're inviting and we would like to come and join our business and work with us, not only will you come and work with us, but hopefully, you know, once we reach a certain level and a certain amount of time, we'd also like you to participate in the ownership of our business. Uh, and that's for us is really where we think makes Mock McDonald difference. If I can move on now to uh, the defence sector. And I think for a lot of you, obviously, as I said, we'll be joining Mott McDonald first, but actually, you know, the purpose of this is really to try and give you some insight into some of the projects that we are working in. Uh, and I'll really take them uh, one by one at the moment. So for approximately now the last nine or 10 years, we've been working at HM Naval Base Clyde, uh, just uh, to the west of uh, Glasgow in Scotland there. Uh, that is the home of the United Kingdom's continuous at sea deterrent via that submarine base and, you know, was last really redeveloped in the 1980s and the MOD have embarked on an ambitious program there to make it fit for purpose out to approximately 2070. Uh, we've been there providing program and project management services, you know, that you would expect and cost and risk around that large critical program and also delivering some of the infrastructure, particularly around the training infrastructure and some of that infrastructure that supports uh, the nuclear submarines when they're alongside. As well as doing uh, infrastructure, we're also involved in equipment programs, providing program and project management support to DNS. Uh, for those who are new to the sector, the Defence Equipment and Support um, Agency, I think, you know, approximately is delivering over a 10 year programme about £180 billion worth of projects. Uh, we are one of the providers to an Aurora partnership in there uh, that provides everything from program and project management support, project controls and integrated logistics support. Um, this is a great opportunity for anyone, particularly who wants to leave the military, uh, has got this sort of DNS opportunity uh, and wants to actually really draw on some of their specialist skills uh, and remain close to the defensive community when they transition out of the military. This is a great opportunity to remain. However, our client and DNS also values the skills and experience that can be brought across from other sectors and then applied into defence. So probably, you know, sort of linking back to some of the elements of our purpose, you know, what we're looking for in, in our recruiting in defence is to make our defence project teams and our offering as diverse as possible. And actually we find our most successful projects and offerings come when we can successfully integrate ex-military personnel, which include myself, with those that bring broader sector experience, someone like Susanna, who's maybe transitioned into the defence sector. And it's those diverse teams that we really think are our strength. We're also proud to be working with Babcock down in Devonport at the moment as their naval base infrastructure program delivery partner. Uh, aligned again, predominantly driven by the submarine program, but also by the surface ship program. This program was initially set up to start looking at some of the dry docks and the submarine re refit complex and is quickly expanding to uh, address other elements of critical infrastructure within that naval base. And we're absolutely um, bought into supporting Babcock with their quite ambitious program that they want to uh, deliver. So there is lots of opportunity over the next five to 10 years for, for work in that program. If I come back up to the top right of that slide at the moment, Defence Infrastructure Organisation are the prime deliverers of infrastructure across defence. We've been lucky over the last couple of years on that map to be working with them in what's in the central region there, uh, working across a huge uh, range of uh, different projects. And I think one of the great things about the defence sector um, is the, 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 the diverse nature of the projects that you can work on owing to the sort of unique challenges of the defence estate. So within that central region, we're working on everything from hospitals to schools to what you might consider the more sort of typically defence projects of working on army bases and, and air bases, you know, delivering airfield services and airfield structures uh, and army bases delivering uh, technical accommodation. But across that central region, we see a huge variety of projects. Uh, somewhere around near Cambridgeshire, we're also working with, for the, again via DIO, for the United States Air Force, who are just bedding down now their F-35 capability in the UK at RAF Lakenheath. Now, it's been a fascinating uh, project as we've had to work on an operational airbase that's wanted to maintain its uh, F-15 operations and actually expand that airbase to take a whole new type of uh, aircraft into that airbase uh, and has been great to work on. And also, if we move down to the topic, Atomic Weapons Establishment in uh, Aldermaston. Uh, I think 
you know, a lot of people would agree it's a, you know, a fascinating site steeped in history. But more importantly, at the moment, again, over the next 10 to 15 years, has a significant period of recapitalization of the infrastructure. So we are working there, both supporting Aldermaston as a client and working some of the works contractors to deliver 100% design. And the reason that that's important is because that particular site, it means that we need the full range of skills from those in the early stage of a project uh, where they might be more sort of strategic master planning through to full sort of 100% technical design of some really complex and interesting facilities. Uh, we'll move swiftly on now and I'll bring in Susanna slightly earlier than she probably expected. Um, who's just going to really talk as, a, as another recent joiner uh, to Mott McDonald, um, what brought her into Mott McDonald and some of the sort of projects that she's been working on. So you could see what a, an experience uh, could be uh, for if you join Mott McDonald. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Um, as Dan said, I'm going to do a little bit about me and a little bit about what I'm currently working on. And as I said, a bit about Martin and what attracted me. Um, so to introduce myself, my name is Susanna Gregory. Um, I currently, as it was said at the beginning, work in the defence sector. I lead um, on defence in Mount McDonald's, what will be our northern region, which um, encompasses um, the northwest, the Yorkshire area and all the way up to Newcastle. I'm going to go on to a little bit in a couple of slides time, some of the projects that we're doing in that region. Um, so I'll kind of save that for then, I think. Mott McDonald, as Dan has said, is a real multinational company with offices all over the world doing a, such a broad range of work. And I think that is one of the things that really attracted me. I mean, you can go off and do your own research on that, but and it's a shame we haven't been able to show you the videos because that would have really given you a feel for that. But um, that broadness and the opportunities that, that presents are really the kind of key things that, that attracted me in. Um, I joined Mott McDonald's um, about three and a half years ago, so I'm a relatively new recruit in the Mott McDonald's world. We have a lot of people who've been here for a lot of time um, and have stayed, and I think that's an important thing to just highlight as well. Um, when I started, um, although we are a multinational company of 16,000 people, it doesn't feel like that. I am based in the Sheffield office. Um, and was brought into a team and really welcomed into that team. Um, and although we're a big company, you really get that small experience as well. So just to take you through how I got to where, where I am now, um, I left school and trained um, in civil and structural engineering at Sheffield University. Um, and decided to stay in Sheffield. So I've got quite a technical background, which is not, um, is, is really good in the DIO and the defence space because our clients really appreciate that technology that you can bring in, but equally not a prerequisite, but it is very beneficial. Um, I then joined Mott McDonald and had a bit of a change of tack and became a project manager. And um, that was back in 2018. And I was brought into Mott McDonald's to manage a framework um, overseas, which included both defence work and work that we do with the Foreign Office, um, which was really interesting. We weren't doing a huge amount of work on that framework at the time. Um, and I was particularly brought in to try and push that forward. And in those few years on that, we have really stepped forward and are doing an awful lot of work overseas now, both with the Foreign Office and with them. Um, the Defence Infrastructure Organisation, which has been really positive. And actually, I'm in Cyprus next week um, on one of our projects, which is a bit of a side benefit to doing that work. Um, following on from being a project manager in Defence, I picked up um, the role of leading um, the Northern team. So we've got about 15 people, I think, who work in the Northern region who work on Defence projects. And um, we've got a lot of projects um, at different stages, and I'll go into a little bit more on that on the next slide. Um, but I kind of head them up looking at resourcing and who's doing what and um, what projects people are going to move on to, looking at bidding for new work. That's a lot of work I do with Dan. Um, and as someone who, as Dan said, doesn't have a military background and had never worked in defence before three years ago, it's been a really interesting um, sector to step into and um, a really different challenge for me. So within the northern region, I just wanted to highlight a few of the projects that we're currently working on. Um, 
one of the ones in that top left corner, we are working a lot in Cyprus and that's part of the framework that I mentioned earlier where we're getting some of our work on. Um, as Dan said, a lot of the infrastructure that's currently on air bases and on the military estate um, has developed slightly organically and um, is in need of um, kind of rebalancing and looking at adjacencies and in where, which bits go next to each other and being a bit more attractive for people to stay and live and work and train on. And so the top two there, the one in Cyprus and the one at RAF Leeming, have been all about looking at that estate looking at how it can better work um, for the people who work on it, the people who live on it, the people who train on it, and making it a better lived and working experience for them. Um, the RAF Aquateri one again is a Cyprus project and actually it's the passenger handling facility out at RAF Aquateri, which is the first project to come out of the work we were doing on the broader Aquateri estate. So that's been really nice to kind of have a look at it see how we can improve it and then do the first project that drops out of it so you really get that kind of longevity of experience we do a lot of work at RAF Waddington oh uh, that's better that work at RAF Waddington that's the bottom left picture one of the projects is protector which is a capability that we're um, introducing down at Waddington again RAF Crowton is slightly out of our region but we've been working there and they've got a new main gate um, project that we've been working on a bit more of an infrastructure project um, and then RAF Scampton are looking to relocate some of their existing capabilities and we've been looking at different locations and produced essentially a feasibility study for, um, for the MOD there looking at how we can reallocate some of those capabilities to different bases um, across the UK. So we want to just have a, a bit of a discussion with you about some of the skills that we're looking for. Dan, I think you wanted to pick up some particular bits on this one, didn't you? Yeah, we'll try and probably sweep up and sweep up some of the, uh, the the missing video stuff, I suppose, for want of a better phrase. So um, this is uh, this is a word cloud when I was asked what we were, we're, were really looking for in people. And, and in many ways, you know, Mott McDonald remains an absolute people centred business. So we're looking for good and talented uh, individuals. Uh, and I would really encourage you to engage with Mott McDonald, um, particularly for any of those, you know, who like myself left the military four years ago that still don't actually know, um, you know, where their future or their second career may wish to take them. You know, so whilst there's some very specific roles in here and some, you know, some of these sort of personal and professional skills we're looking at, some are specific and some are ambiguous. You know, I'm absolutely convinced with the breadth of uh, defence and our work in defence that, you know, if you're the right type of person that, you know, there will be a role for you in Mott McDonald's. So really from some of the personal skills that we're looking for, you know, we are looking for leadership and we do value, you know, some of those uh, ex-military leadership capabilities. But as I said, we're also looking for people that have had leadership uh, functions in other sectors as well. Because as I say, we truly believe at Mott McDonald that diverse teams will ultimately bring about uh, a stronger performance by ourselves and better outcomes uh, for our clients. Really looking for sort of engaging and ambitious um, people. You know, Mott McDonald defence sector has, has been on a sort of huge bout of growth over the last eight or nine years, and we can still see ahead of us, you know, a huge opportunity to grow in the defence sector. So the people that we want uh, to encourage are those engaging and ambitious people that want to join us on that journey uh, and, and really grasp these opportunities that the sort of the most recent investment in defence that was announced at the beginning of the year um, that, you know, we can help play our part in realising. You know, there are, of course, and if you look through our website, there are absolutely specific roles that we're looking for. You know, program and project management is an absolute key um, capability for us and where we think we can really differentiate ourselves in that in that space through the quality of our people. And if you can remember back to the beginning of our sort of purpose and we talked about our technical excellence as well as our professional excellence, you know, we need, um, you know, built environment engineering skills uh, that will absolutely help us give those solutions and develop those solutions for our clients who often at the beginning of the project still don't know exactly what they need. But that re those really talented and inquisitive individuals that could help our clients go on that journey and then deliver, you know, that right infrastructure that, you know, we like to refer to supports a broader military capability and that's really what I wanted to come across for um, you know outcome focus so I'm just going to hand over now to our one of our talent acquisition team Chris 
who will um, you know be able to you know take you through some of the absolute processes uh, and there are absolutely you know hundreds of roles that we're looking to fulfill in Mott McDonald at the moment and some of those are defence roles but I really would ask you know if you think that there is something in defence for you and it's a very broad sector defence then please do reach out to our talent acquisition team um, because we would be more than happy to uh, review CVs uh, and you know there might be opportunities that are coming up uh, that you know we may be able to engage you with. I'll now hand you over to Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. So just to introduce myself, my name is Chris Raybould and I'm part of the talent acquisition team at Mott McDonald. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to discuss how you apply with us um, and what to actually look for and what your experience will be with us. So first of all, how to apply with us. You are able to access our website on mottmac.com forward slash careers. However, you can also find us on the likes of Google or search engines if you just type in Mark McDonald Careers. Now, once you go onto a careers website, you can search for specific roles such as, as you can see on screen, Commission Manager, Program Manager. One thing I would like to add, if you are looking to apply and you're not sure of what the job title will be or where you would maybe fit in the, the role, please feel free to contact myself on LinkedIn. Um, to send me a connection request and um, send me a message. I'll happily help you. What I will also do is I will um, include an email address that you can email at the end during the Q&A session as well, and we will be able to help you out further there. The online website is for um, our experienced hires. So what I would say is if you are a graduate looking for roles, that is a that is a slightly different process. Um, and if you Google Mark McDonald graduates, that will take you onto that website. It's just got slightly different um, qualifications, slightly different questions you have to answer. Um, so first of all, once you look on the website and you decide what role you would like to apply for, it is an online application. It does state on here it takes about 12 minutes, but I, I would say about five. And the process would be for you to find the role. You then have to fill in some personal details, your name, your address, what we will then ask you to do is attach your CV and then we also have an optional covering letter. Now, our careers website is desktop and mobile friendly, so you can do it on your mobile as well. Now, once you've uploaded your CV, as I said, the covering letter is optional. However, we don't use any sort of automated system, so every single person that applies, their CV comes through to one of the talent acquisition team and we look through the CV and the covering letter. So if you are applying for a role and you maybe not think you're 100% you're suitable, please feel free to write a covering letter to us explaining why you think you'd be suitable and we will definitely look at that. We do answer every single application, so anyone that applies will either get an email or a phone call from us and that is any application out of the thousands we receive. Um, now, once you apply for a role with your CV, what I would say is we look through the CVs before we pass them on to the relevant department, such as Defence. Um, we will look for certain candidate specification questions, such as what kind of qualifications you have, where you kind of sit. However, you don't have to have 100% of what is in the candidate specification. We do look at it on a case by case basis. Now, after you've filled in the, the de your personal details, then your CV and possibly covering letter, um, you are then asked a few simple questions. The questions are such as your salary expectations, which always helps us so we know kind of what we're looking at to offer you. Um, we will then also ask you your notice period so that that can be handy as well for when we're looking for certain roles we're looking to fill. And then we do also ask you if you require a visa. Mott McDonald is a sponsorship of visa candidates, so this isn't an issue. We just ask you in the first instance so we know kind of how to progress with your interview. But again, as I said, if you have any questions regarding visas, please get in touch with us. Um, once you do apply, as you said, we will review all your, your application and we will get in touch with you um, just to discuss it further and to give you kind of any answers you may need. It is pretty straightforward, so now I'll pass on to, I believe we might actually be trying to reload the videos before we go to a and a with our colleague Rob, um, and hopefully the videos will load this time and you can enjoy them. Thank you.
Nope. Do we have the videos, Dan, do you think? Before we go to Q&A? Rob, are we, are we moving on, Rob? And then uh, I believe they should play. I think we just go to the Q&A first. Let's go, let's go to the Q&A, that's great. <laughs> So if you, anybody does have any questions, please uh, use that chat uh, function we have. Um, drop any questions. If there's anything that is uh, related to uh, applying for the role, anything before the application process, uh, will uh, Chris will be more than happy to answer those. Anything related to actually the role itself, uh, Dan and Susanna, uh, they'll be able to give you their experience uh, and be able to uh, um, answer any questions you might have. Uh, if there's uh, nothing to begin with, um, I mean, really, we could, um, Chris, um, there was one question that does pop up quite a lot. I know you answered it slightly, but um, non-UK citizens, um, they shouldn't be put off by the fact that um, they've uh, not uh, worked in the UK, should they? No, what I would say is we, we hire non-UK citizens quite a lot. We do also do a lot of internal transfers from um, our foreign offices. For instance, recently I've hired someone from New York and surprisingly the visa process only took 28 days. They had never had any UK experience, but we as a company could see how diverse they were and how much um, extra experience they could bring to our UK offices, so we were more than happy to go ahead. So a visa and no UK experience is definitely not a barrier, and I'm pretty sure Dan will agree with me on that as well. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. So, you know, there are such specific projects across defence in any country across the world where there might be nationality requirements, uh, but they tend to be the exception rather than rule wherever you may be employed within Mott McDonald. Thank you very much. Um, so we've had a question from um, Anish and Paul. They might be actually quite similar. Um, so do we uh, need to have any experience in defence? Dan? Yeah, uh, so in short, no. Um, so a lot of the um, the built environment, uh, you know, elements, uh, you know, are very similar to, you know, elements you might found elsewhere. You know, you could be talking about airfields, you could be talking about ports and even a lot of the infrastructure within, you know, army bases is, you know, can be standard, uh, you know, standard infrastructure. There are some obviously specialist elements of infrastructure, but absolutely not. You don't need to have experience in defence. You know, there are differences working in defence. Often you're working on operational sites uh, and that means that projects are occasionally delivered slightly differently differently than they might be in other sectors, uh, but you can absolutely transfer uh, in and out of defence. And as I said, you know, absolutely, you know, we're here to recruit for Mott McDonald and you will, you know, you will work, you know, we're recruiting for defence here, but you will be joining Mott McDonald. Can I just add to that, Dan, as well, just to reiterate that I had never worked in defence before I came to Mott McDonald um, three years ago. So I had a lot of transferable skills, which a lot of others will have, um, but Defence experience is certainly not a prerequisite. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, Ahmed asked a, a great question. Um, so could you touch on the flexible working arrangement that Mott McDonald offer? Um, Dan, um, would you like to take this one? Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy. So I think you know, with with recent experiences, Mott McDonald was always in a transition to agile working, and and I think you know, the recent or the previous eighteen months has probably accelerated that um, transition. Um, so so we are agile by nature, um, and you know, as you go through a project life cycle, um, there will be more, you know more requirements for working, you know sort of collaboratively in teams where you might need to be physically together uh, and often for remote working. So, you know, I think at the moment I'm maybe in an office one day a week and I may travel, you know, one evening, you know, one night a week. Um, I think it all depends where you're in that project. That sort of forming a project team, you know, there's probably an initial point of when you're together, but uh, I, I would struggle to see anyone or very few people who are in an office full time at the moment. Uh, and as we tried to bring out in some of our um, earlier slides, we're absolutely outcome focused so it's the way of working and often that will be flexibly that you know allows us to deliver the project in the best and the most efficient way thanks thank you um 
I mean, Susanna, working in um, your role, um, what would your experience of the uh, uh, McDonald Agile working policy? Um, yeah, be? I'm very, very similar to Dan. I do a couple of days in the office um, and a few days from home, and sometimes I'm out and about. I'm in the Leeds office today, um, but very much flexible on where I'm going to be. Out of the people that we currently have working um, in the defence team, we have people who do part time. Some people start a bit earlier, finish a bit earlier. We're very flexible in the way that people can work. Um, there are things you need to do. Sometimes you need to visit a base here or travel there, but very easy to, to fit around um, different um, commitments and families and, and whatever else it might be. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I see that somebody's got their hand up in the chat. Barry, if you could just, um, if you have any questions at all, just pop them in the chat function and we'll be able to answer them for you. Um, uh, so, um, try and pronounce this right, Verse, um, uh, what benefits do you believe uh, an employee owned business brings over a traditional management structure? Um, I mean, anyone, Dan, um, do you have any thoughts on that? No, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to take it. I, I would say we're all invested in it. So, the, you know, the employee owned structure is um, not totally unique, but sort of relatively unique in that how how far and wide it's spread uh, that, um, you know, the employee benefit sort of uh, reaches out. So, you know, for the you know, there's share ownership for the more seniors and there's sort of staff uh, pots for the, the more junior owners. But I think what it does is what I'm trying to say is everyone benefits from that employee ownership structure. And what we tend to find is it actually makes us all more invested uh, in the business. You know, again, I, I come back, you know, to that sort of outcomes focus, you know, our, our success will be our joint success uh, across the whole of the business. Uh, and, I, and I can say, you know, leaving from the military, it's, you know, one of the things that I always say is when people ask, what's it like to work in an employee owned business? I don't think I've ever phoned anyone up and asked for help from anyone and sort of been told, no, I'm too busy. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure if it's just the employee ownership that actually drives that. But um, from a sort of collegiate and collaborative uh, way of working, I, I found it absolutely fantastic. And, and I do think that employee ownership model is, is one of those key strands to it. Thanks, Dan. Um, uh, Chris, um, I think we have a question for you from uh, Ahmed. Um, for disabled candidates, do you offer the Disability Guaranteed Interview Scheme? Hi, Ahmed. I mean, thanks very much for your question. Um, yeah, we do. Mark McDonald really believe in EDI. Um, we run a lot of EDI schemes that target things such as um, anyone under the disabled category, any kind of anyone under ethnic minority or anyone kind of we also target women returners as well. So what I would say is if you have any sort of disability, it is not a barrier to us at all. We we accommodate it. Um, a lot of our interviews we can also offer um, over Teams, we can offer over video, we can offer them to have kind of transcriptions as well. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, what I will also do is I noticed Paul asked a question earlier on whether we have an ex-military recruitment team. We don't have a specific team, however, we do run projects, so we are aware of the, um, the issues that face ex-military trying to get back in, into the workforce. Um, what we do is it is something we're always looking at, especially in defence. As mentioned before, there is an email address that I'm going to pop in just now. If you do have any further queries or you want to be part of any of our projects regarding military, ex-military, or even you, Ahmed, regarding any kind of disability allowances we have, I'll put the email address in and you can send us the email. One of the talent acquisition team will pick it up and we can take it from there. That should be the can email I, address. Can I, can I come in on that one as well? Yeah, um, and your ex-military actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, my, you know, Paul, ex-military. So there is a there's a good strong ex-military network in the business, and um, and and probably some of the not having talent acquisition team just focusing on ex-military. You know, is the reason we don't is is probably some ways down to me, um, because actually I'm very keen that we we see the value of ex-military, um, and actually you know judging them against other candidates, they often perform exceptionally well. Um, so to come in, all of the talent acquisition team are aware of the benefits that ex-military do. You know, defence sector obviously tends to attract more. We actually, I think, it's equally important to say is we have a lot of ex-military now that work in our other sectors, you know, outside of defence. I, I mean, I include myself in that. I was a programme develop, uh, 
director for an international education project out in Tanzania because we're also an international development consultancy. So whilst we do, um, so all the talent acquisition team, which tend to sort of feed into all the different sectors, are absolutely aware of the value that the military bring, you know, and whilst we've done the normal stuff, you know, of the covenant and the employer's recognition scheme and stuff, um, I, I truly want us to go above and beyond that and start sort of uh, recognising the value. Um, so it doesn't matter which talent acquisition team you see, um, and they also know the ex-military network within the business, which can sometimes help with translation um, of CVs if there are any doubts. Um, hopefully that puts your mind at rest. But again, if you want to reach out to Chris and discuss further, I'm, I'm also happy to link up uh, and talk about more about my experience of transferring across, which actually you know, was seamless. I was in a very fortunate position that I got offered my contract with Mott McDonald seven months before I left the military. Um, and so, you know, just to highlight, you know, the, the level of sort of flexibility, you know, and that was exceptional in some ways, but the level of flexibility that uh, Mott's will go to if they can see the right person for the right roles coming up. Hopefully that answers your question. Good. Thank you very much. Um, and may I had a question. Um, any upcoming webinar for other departments like civil engineering? Um, Chris, I know that we've done um, a few of these. Um, I think this would be my six now. If we got any, I know there's a few links on YouTube to some of the ones that we've done before. But Chris, would you be able to um, uh, upload some that we've had before onto your LinkedIn? Um, mm -hmm. Just so that um, so if anybody wants to um, just um, reach out to Chris and we'll be able to get um, some of those videos out to you. We are hopefully wanting to do more in the future um, on those. Um, Armour, what I would say with Armour is we we've run quite a few of those webinars recently. They have been run by different areas of the business, so I don't have a visibility over all of them. I'll double check if we have did a, um, a structural engineer and civil engineering one. If so, I'll send your connection request and send the recording on to you. But if not, it is something I'll, range, I'll raise with the talent acquisition team. And it's definitely something we can look at. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Nish had a question, Dan. I think this one could be good for you. Uh, is it necessary to have structural experience to apply for the role? Um, I so there are, you know, within within the website and the recruitment website, there are some specific roles that we are looking at. But uh, I think as Chris tried to explain earlier, you know, if you know if there are roles that you think you are close, you know, you are close to, but you don't meet all the criteria, please don't let that uh, put you off applying. Um, because actually, with the covering letter, you can highlight what those strengths are. And as I said, we've got absolutely hundreds of roles that we're recruiting for, uh, and a lot of those roles are happening, uh, you know, and changing frequently. Um, so I would never want to discuss encourage anyone, uh, you know, putting off anyone applying. If if I've interpreted your question wrong and you're saying that actually you want to get into structures, um, then there is a, you know, a graduate recruitment scheme and there's apprentice recruitment schemes. I think Chris highlighted that that's on a different website. So if, if you search, so um, yeah, it depends what the role want to get. If you're looking, you know, to come in at a, a sort of an entry grade role, there's lots of ways of entering uh, Mott McDonald. If you want to come in as, as a more experienced person, but you're looking, you know, to change, as Susanna highlighted, she went from sort of structural engineer to becoming a project manager. Again, please don't hesitate to uh, contact us and, and, you know, we can then try and work out where you best fit into the organisation. Thanks, Dan. Um, and but say had uh, a last question. Um, so Dan, maybe Susanna, you can uh, answer this one. Uh, what do you believe makes Mott McDonald stand out when compared to other big consultancy firms? Do you want me to go, Dan, or are you? You go first, yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> um, well, I've worked for two of the biggest consultancy firms, um, I think, in the UK, and Mark McDonald really does stand out, I think, in terms of, as Dan was talking about, that ownership structure. We are our own bosses. We're not ruled by somebody above and shareholders telling us what to do. We're in charge of that and, and we can control our own destiny to an extent. And that's a really nice thing. I think for me as well, that idea of being sort of truly all over the world, um, projects, 
that are open to you are really I've got a project in Kuala Lumpur at the moment I've got a project in Cyprus I've got a project in Qatar um, plus a number of UK projects so it's really that that variety and diversity um, within the portfolio of work that we do. Yeah and, and just building and supporting on what Susanna has, has said I think Mott McDonald is a great size business because it is global and it does give you all those opportunities but it hasn't become so big if you see what I mean uh, that it's sort of, I don't want to say it's faceless and corporate because I don't want you know I'm not trying to do down others to you know make Mott McDonald but it, it it's still got that you know that atmosphere of one team uh, and people working together uh, and I think you know it Mots has found itself in a really nice niche place that it can, you know, absolutely do anything that it wants to, like uh, you know any of the other consultancy firms. Um, but it does it in such a way that it's it sort of still feels like a, a business that you own. You have a say in the direction of the business, uh, and, and you feel like you're contributing to something. It's probably the best way I could put it. I think that's a really good way of putting it in the end. Um, and then Ahmed had uh, another question, uh, which I think um, you both could help answer that. How would you describe the opportunity uh, progression within the company? So Dan, should we start with you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ha absolutely happy. So, you know, like all organisations, we, you know, have very defined uh, career pathways uh, of how you want to get it done. Uh, we've, as a company, tried to move away from the annual appraisal uh, and the way that we try to do progression and training progression and finding projects that people want to work on so they get both that personal and professional satisfaction is, is, you know, is a process of conversation that you have with your line manager and into your uh, resourcing uh, manager manager so you know rather than the annual appraisal you know didn't you do well this year uh, we've tried to change that sort of uh, HR approach to what we call a connected conversation internally but it's an ongoing conversation between yourself and your line manager about how you see your own career developing and also working with the manager to you know align that with how the business sees it's um, developing so I would say progression is more on an iterative basis. You you get given control of how you can develop your career. Um, that does put a bit of onus back onto you because you obviously need to think about what your future ambition is. But if you do actually, and I think we we mentioned ambition in in that sort of word cloud earlier. You know, if you do have that ambition, it's it's absolutely there. And in going back, you know, I don't want to keep coming back to that employee-owned model, but it, it does allow you to be sort of quite entre and intrapreneurial. You know, so if you have great ideas and sort of uh, ideas that you want to take forward that can either, you know, internally improve how we deliver or maybe deliver better for our clients. Um, I'm yet to see anyone who hasn't been supported in sort of taking, you know, taking that further, um, you know, whether that's sort of supporting of time, resource and financing, you know, to progress an idea. Um, so absolutely you know it's it's in your own gift essentially within mots to to move your career ahead but we absolutely still place a, a responsibility on that line manager to help you in that process uh, Susanna is there anything you might I was to just add gonna, just gonna add um I think it's quite interesting what Dan was saying about the way we've moved away from the sort of annual and very sort of structured appraisal into these connected conversations which really do help um as I said, I'm based in Sheffield. My line manager is based in Sheffield, but I do a lot of work with Dan, who's based in Scotland um, and in a different division to me. And he's able to feed into those conversations and allow that kind of 360 review that does help with that kind of progression and, and development and how you're going to shape your career. So that has been a real positive step forward, I think. I think there's just a question that's come through that is uh, just linked with this. Is Do you actively support further education within the company? Um, so, so, so yes, yeah, yes. So, uh, yes, we do. Um, you know, uh, you know, Paul. I'm, I'm guessing from maybe one of your earlier questions, your ex-military. You know, that probably is the gold standard of what it can support you with. Um, but as a company, it is good. You know, we do have training development plans as part of that connected, uh, you know, conversations uh, program. You can apply to do degrees and get support with funding for degrees. And then, you know, there's elements of smaller training packages of CPD on a annual basis. So I think, you know, I've been in Mock McDonald four years and I've probably gained another sort of two externally recognised qualifications, you know, in, in that period. So, you know, I, I'm evidence that it, it does happen. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think Chris, uh, we've got a question for you. Um, uh, Amit says, uh, I'm from India and have five years experience in infrastructure industry, primarily in highways, railways, execution. How can I get employed in Mock McDonald? 
Yeah, no problem. What I would like to add on what Dan just said there as well regarding training um, fees, etc. Once you're chartered or, or the likes, we do also pay for an annual subscription to a professional body, such as your kind of subsidy, your chartership as well. So that's something to bear in mind that would be less of a cost for yourself. Um, then just going back to, to the question regarding um, visa. Now, we there is no barrier at all. What you would just do is you would apply. We, we discussed the visa requirements with you. Most visa requirements since Brexit have been relaxed. So what would happen is you would just apply. We would have a normal process as we would in the UK. We would do, our, it would be a video interview for yourself. If we're looking to make you an offer, we would discuss you with you. We would make the offer to you um, and discuss the visa. And then we pay for the sponsorship of the visa. So it's all pretty straightforward, apart from some some legal forms you may have to fill in. But we treat you the exact same as we would treat someone that's based even in the same city as our office. So it is pretty, pretty easy. Excellent. Thanks, Chris. Um, and then uh, we've got a question from uh, Barry. Uh, I think, uh, Dan, you might be able to help with this one. Um, so how important is it that applicants with UK MOD links have security clearance? And would this help with the application process? Uh, so we don't, uh, you know, discriminate a strong word of whether if you apply for a job in the defence sector with or without a security clearance, you know, there is obviously a speed that we can get you mobilised onto certain defence projects if someone already has that security clearance. Uh, but uh, as a company, we can sponsor security clearance uh, ourselves uh, and we will just, uh, you know, take you through that um, process if you wanted to apply for a job without security clearance. So, you know, there's obvious benefits to already having one in place, um, but it's absolutely not a barrier. Uh, and, you know, your application will be judged on its merits. Um, and I, I can't imagine a situation where, you know, just having that security clearance, you know, would be enough to distinguish between uh, candidates, especially because we have that ability to sponsor our own security clearances. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and Ahmed had another question on the point of international products. Is the requirement upon the employee to uh, travel constantly? Um, Susanna, you said that you had um, projects all over the world. Can you answer this one? I did. Um, I would describe it almost the opposite way around. I'd suggest there is an opportunity. If travel is something that interests you and you want to travel, then I think the opportunity is there. Um, however, if if that didn't fit with your current position or, or wherever you are in your life, then equally it wouldn't be necessary. Obviously, this past um, year or so, travel has been very, very limited and we have managed really, really well with projects overseas using Teams and other means to um, have those conversations and have those meetings that we couldn't have face to face. Um, for me personally, I've been quite looking forward to, to traveling again. And so it's quite nice to do a few visits. But yeah, certainly no, um, no need to do it. But if you wanted to, then the opportunity is there. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, and Verse, um, one last well, last question. Um, when does the UK Graduate and Apprenticeship Scheme open for 2022 intake? Chris, do you have uh, an idea? Yeah. yeah, definitely. I was actually speaking to um, our early careers team yesterday and they had told me the, the grad scheme was opening today. So if you go on to Mac graduates, you will be able to find all the information. Um, I believe the Scottish apprenticeships went up yesterday and the UK wide ones went up today. So if you have a look, you will be able to apply. Um, what I would also like to point out is Residue. Sorry, I hope I've said your name right. I, um, I totally agree with what you're saying about the company. I work full time in talent acquisition. I may not do the kind of engineering side, but I am also um, completing a part time um, degree in environmental science. And that is part of the reason I applied to MOTS um, and also live in Glasgow. So I've also just been through the COP26, which MOTS was heavily involved in as well. So I do think it is a noble cause for a company to be involved in. Thank you for that, that comment there. Thank you very much. Um, don't believe there are any other questions uh, that we need to answer. Um, there is one question that I like to end with um, to Dan and Susanna is like, do, what is your the highlight of your McDonald career so far? So, put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. Um, I think for me, it was probably um, completing the estate management plan we did for RAF at Criteri. It was um, 
about 18 months worth of work, um, a few trips over to Cyprus, a lot of hard work, a lot of engagement with the guys over there and getting that pulled together into a really kind of um, clear and concise plan for that for that base going forward was really positive. And then to see some projects coming out of it that we're actually going to deliver um, is, is just great and a, and a really nice experience. Thank you. And uh, for me, ironically, despite being here for a defence sector recruiting, is for me my highlight was outside of the uh, defence sector. And as I said, I was a programme director for one of our DFID, now FCDO projects in Tanzania, doing an international education programme, trying to get more people into education in Tanzania. Um, and it was just a, a, a fantastic programme and a real sort of sense of purpose um, that it gave you. So, you know, that's uh, probably the highlight of my career so far. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, we do have one last question, Chris. If you want to uh, jump back in, um, so the question from uh, Amit um, was, who wants to work out uh, from India and uh, working for Mark McDonald? Um, I mean, if that is the question, you we do have um, Mark McDonald India, so we have offices in India, so. I would suggest apply to them. Um, if you are looking to work for Mott McDonald UK, at the moment what the situation would be is you would have to apply for a UK role. We would have to get you a visa so you can actually work within the UK and then we would let you work remote in India. However, because we have an, an Indian um, presence, that is it's highly unlikely. So you would, if you're looking to work with Mott's, in India, then Mott McDonald, it's in Chennai, would be your best bet, other than if you want to apply for a UK role and head over here, awesome. if that helps. Um, can I just say that there's also a question from is Anish as well. I don't know if um, anyone's answered this. Um, Anish says they have civil experience, haven't worked in structural design, so they weren't sure if we looked for structural design experience. They're looking to have a career without structural design. Dan, you I, no, I mean, we, we are looking for, for experience across the whole of the built environment. Um, so, yeah, that, you know, some of those, uh, if we've specified particular sort of, you know, engineering sectors, you know, that's just to highlight it's, it's the full breadth of uh, when it comes to those design services, it's the full breadth of across the built environment and supporting infrastructure. So, yeah, you don't need one particular design uh, capability. Thank you very much. Um, and I think it's um, it's quite good to point out as well. Um, like Chris, you are you are on LinkedIn as well. If there are any more questions, um, more than happy to um, answer those uh, out of this um, presentation. Um, please always reach out to uh, our talent acquisition team if you do have any questions after this. Um, they are always here to help. Um, so I think that's um, the end. Uh, Dan, do you want to um, do you want to wrap everything up for us? Yeah, thanks, Rob. No, I, I'd just like to thank you all for uh, taking the time to uh, join us today. Sorry about the uh, technical errors. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been great to hear your questions and really look forward to hopefully some future engagement with you all. Thanks.